first round from Selland Arena. It's the home of the Fresno State Bulldogs. The dogs out of the whack, and the Temple Owls from the A-10. The winner gets a Louisville club that had to come from behind in the closing seconds to win their ball game at home last night. Welcome to Fresno, Bob Carpenter, Jimmy Dykes, and we've got a legendary coaching matchup tonight. 61 years between them, 1,400 plus wins. And a lot of defense. If you're John Chaney coming in, you got that matchup zone and you've got a star in Lynn Greer. Jerry Tarkanian's bringing to the floor the amoeba zone and Melvin Eli. Two great coaches, two great players, two great defenses. Not very deep either ball club, and uh, they both have to play some zone defense to keep people out of foul trouble. Melvin Eli, he can foul out an entire team if he's on tonight. The big fella for the dogs and the Temple Owls getting ready in Fresno. You've come to the right place. You can feel the spirit. And it's good to get together. And enjoy some awesome steak. So don't just go out. Go out back. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, sound control, even home theaters. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, we know homes. Recently, we discovered Pismo Beach with romantic walks along the coast, beautiful beaches and breathtaking sunsets. There are many wonderful golf courses and fine world-class wineries. Most of all, we enjoyed the friendly people in Pismo Beach. The California of yesteryear we felt was gone, it's still here, and we can't wait to go back. Pismo Beach is truly classic California. Find out for yourself. It's just an easy drive from the Bay Area. Hi folks, Eddie Mack here from Ron Smith with some incredible year-end savings. Right now we have a four-door crew cab, that's right, a true four-door crew cab. It was $36,000, now it's only $29,999 after factory rebate. Here's a hot new Pontiac Aztec, this was the owner's demo, had a $27,000 sticker, now it's $21,999 after rebate. Or a six-cylinder automatic Sonoma was $20,000, now it's only $15,499 at Ron Smith. Where we do business the old-fashioned way with a smile and a handshake. ESPN's presentation of the Owens Corning NIT postseason tournament is presented by Owens Corning. At Owens Corning, we know homes. And in part by Adidas Climacool, giving you 360 degrees of ventilation. Feel the breeze. And by Armor All Protectant Wipes. Armor All Shine and Protection, now in a wipe. Fresno State Bulldogs, 19 and 14 on the year, and a rather mediocre 9 and 9 in the whack. Tulsa knocked them out of their conference tournament. Temple, 15 and 14. Lineups tonight, well, some pretty big guys around Lynn Greer, like Kevin Lyde. We'll see Ron Rollerson later. Melvin Eli surrounded by some decent guard play when Travis Demanby gets it going. Damon Jackson, a proven scorer, and Matt Mitchell at the point. Chris Sandy has been ineligible lately. And as usual, the Bulldogs trying to scrape up enough players to have a little depth and play a college basketball game. The opening tap back to the home team, and Matt Mitchell, a freshman from Atlanta, will get the offense going. About that Temple zone all evening long, they make you knock down shots over the top rope. That has not been the strength for Fresno this season. Melvin Eli averaging nine rebounds a game with the putback. He averaged 26 points a game in conference play, two better than his overall average on the year. Lynn Greer, meanwhile, 20 a game for the Temple Owls out of Philadelphia. He's stationed on the left perimeter, and he takes a hit. A little hip check from Noel Felix as he started making his move. Well, you see already the toughness to try to guard Lynn Greer. He's got all the stuff. The ball fakes, the head fakes. He plays the game in different speeds, plays the game one pass ahead. Here's the kid that put 47 on the board earlier this year against Wisconsin. How about that? That was early in the season. He had 22 at Duke, so playing good clubs on the road doesn't bother him, and he drains the three. 
Glenn Greer, 2,038 points. Only Mark Makin has scored more in Temple history. Travis Demand be the miss. Rebound Noel Felix, and that's two offensive rebounds already for Fresno State. Going to make it three. No, finally, Greer pulls it down. He will leave it on the right side for Alex Westby. Then over to the wing, getting it back from David Hawkins. Hawkins having an outstanding sophomore year, 15 points a game. Fresno opens up that amoeba zone. A little bit different shifts. A lot of pressure on the ball. The other four guys really protect that lane area. Hawkins, the long rebound for Temple. Greer, nice little shot fake. He never looks like he's in much of a hurry. Three ball well long from Brian Polk, who is the Atlantic 10 sixth man of the year. A first-year sophomore with 10 double-figure games under his belt this year. Well, Temple just doesn't shoot the ball great from the perimeter. Only a 34% three-point club. Greer's the guy you got to keep an eye on, though, because they make eight or nine a game because of how many they take out there. Westby, who's an instant offense kind of guy, over to Hawkins, and he is trying to drill it from the left baseline. Won't go, and an offensive rebound there over the top. It'll be on Kevin Lyde of Temple. And throughout his career, Kevin Lyde, along with Ron Rollerson, have sometimes been in a heap of foul trouble, especially Rollerson, who does not get the start tonight. Yeah, Lyde's a guy that's played pretty much all year, not in top condition, just not getting himself back in that playing condition that he had going last year, but still put eight or nine boards a game on. Uh-oh. Number two on Kevin Lyde. And that's a big problem early for John Cheney. Two fouls early on the big fella. John Cheney, 446 wins in 20 years at Temple. You know how many head coaches they've had since 1926? Five of them. He's a Hall of Famer now, joining the Chief Harry Litwack who is a 21-year man on the bench at Temple. And Felix missing. Hey, what I like most about John Chaney, nothing fancy about that guy. I mean, from the way he coaches, the way he recruits, the way he dresses, just a simple nuts and bolts of basketball is what he stands for. And I love watching his teams play. I love how he goes about the game. Yeah, and if you were a player, you'd love those 7 o'clock practices, too. We're talking a.m., not p.m. Here's Polk, and he throws up an air ball. So after Matt shooting at one end with Noel Felix missing a couple of free throws, Polk throws up an air ball. Out to the perimeter, Jackson along, and Damon's 0 for 2. We saw him have a wonderful game on this floor about a month ago when he dropped 24 on Oklahoma State. Boy, 7 out of 11 from the three-point line that afternoon. And if there ever was a momentum shooter in college basketball, Damon Jackson's probably it. Temple, the half court play plays pretty much what they would call a pass and receive game. And the shortest point there. And then a steal by Hawkins. He's down there alone, nobody to rebound, but it finds Polk. He finds his teammate, and uh, David Hawkins rolls it in. Again, Bob, neither club shoots great from the perimeter. They've struggled with it all season long. So the club that gets offensive rebounds tonight, some transition baskets, get to the free throw stripe, probably the team that's going to advance in this tournament. John Cheney roaring over on that sideline. Does not want his season to end here tonight. Demanby way out there. And this is a very poor shooting Fresno team. They're 0 for 4 now with that miss. Three and a half minutes in, Temple on top 5-2. Demanby was a kid who was number three or four three-point shooter in the WAC last year, and now 28% from the three-point line. Has had Jerry Tarkanian scratching his head all season long, figuring out that perimeter shooting. Is tonight the end of Jerry Tarkanian's career if the Bulldogs lose? A lot of speculation locally. Jimmy and I talked at length with Tark about it at practice today. He said when the season's over, he'll sit down with John Welton, the Fresno State president, to discuss his future. There's a steal. Lynn Greer off to the races. How about that first step after he got possession? And Lynn's got five already. Boy, Temple awfully active with their hands. They About eight or nine steals a ball game, and again, you don't shoot it well, you better find other ways to score. Well, that's how they're going to score tonight. Nobody hitting a perimeter shot yet. Melvin Eli, he's got all four of the Fresno points four minutes in. How about Melvin Eli's numbers this year in the WAC play? Mainly that 60% field goal shooting. This is a guy that gets double teamed, sometimes triple teamed, for 40 minutes a ball game. So you're not going to get Lynn Greer out of character, out of rhythm, out of speed. This is the first five minutes of this ballgame. He's got the ability to really get his 
body into you. He's a fallible kid. And a kick on the pass by Niall Murray. And we arrive at the first timeout. Four and a half minutes in. Lynn Greer's got five. Temple has seven. And they lead at Fresno by three. Bid now on exclusive props from a season on the brand. Log on to ESPNAuctions.com. protection in a white. All right, whichever one of you guys picked that Vandertech stock, thank you for the new boat I bought this weekend. Oh, nice. Rick, was that you? No, it wasn't me. Maybe it was Kowalski. No, no, no. It was uh, Fisher Fish. Yeah. Fish Nips. What? Good call on that Vandertech stock. Can I pick that one? Come on, Vic. Come on. 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 More of what you need to stay ahead in today's economy. E-Trade Financial. The closer you get, the more extreme it gets. The most extreme V-Twins on the planet. VTX from Honda. This guy is about to eat a song. The pizza you eat like a sandwich. And these things are big. So you gotta train. 51 cubic inches of perfection. Come on, bag of bones. $5.99 or two for $10.99. Come on, tiny. The new Pazone from Pizza Hut. Temple up early in this one, 7 to 4. I want to take a look at that Temple zone. Now keep an eye on two things. This is Lynn Greer playing the top spot. He has great anticipation in Fresno State. They got to get a little better angle to pass to, Bob. But now watch what happens. Lynn Greer just kind of baits you. Boom! Anticipation gets that hand in the passing lane and takes it down for an easy two points. Damon Jackson has that other guard up top. He's got to get away from Lynn Greer. He's got to get a better angle to pass to. If not, this guy will rip and run all evening long. He anticipates at the top of, of a zone better than anyone I've seen the last three or four years in college basketball. Yeah, his defense goes well with his offense. Leads them in steals this year. Leads them in assists. One of the greatest all-time players ever at Temple. Hawkins thinking about the three. In the left corner, that's Holly Smith, a 6'6 freshman out of Florida. Gives them some perimeter stuff. Down goes the three. And how about this? As soon as Kevin Light goes to the bench with a couple of fouls in the first two minutes, Temple starts lighting it up with guard play all over the place. Right now they've got Ron Rollerson in there, number 30. And can this guy move some people around? He's listed at 6'10", 295. There he is on Melvin Elon. And Melvin just bouncing off people. That'll be a held ball. And the possession arrow going back the other way. How about Ron Rollerson? He made Elvin, Melvin Eli look like a little picket of a fence right there. What he's listed and what he is are two different things. Because <laughs> he can talk about putting a big body on you and taking up space. Big man's got on a triple extra large, and that thing's stretched right now. He is a space-eating guy. And got good feet, soft hands. Hawkins for three again. Get along with it. Upstairs for the rebound. And it's going to be a foul on Temple coming down. Damon Jackson, the man who got the rebound for Fresno State. First foul on Niall Murray. Houston kid. An All-American at Klein Forest a year ago. For John Chaney. Now he's got some good young players, Jimmy. But he's going to have to compensate for some loss of size. Speaking of that, Hiram Fuller at 6'9". Checks in for Fresno State. Or is there a more recognizable guy on the college level than John Cheney down there to our right? Always has that white shirt on, the tie undone just a little bit. Nothing fancy. And 
down Three. the post for the left side. Travis DeMampi finally knocking one down. 30% three-point shooter. That gets it back to a 10-7 game. Temple awfully comfortable and confident, Bob, in playing the game in the 50s and low 60s. That's where they want to get you. Keep it that half-court affair. Knock down eight or nine, ten three-point shots on you. Get enough stuff on the interior. And they put the clamps on you in the half-court defense. That's how they've won ball games this year. And the 20 years that John Cheney's been at Temple. Rollerson comes up to set a high pick. Dawkins swings it for Murray. Left side. And a swish for Niall Murray. That's a freshman averaging six points a game. And shooting a very respectable 38% at the line. Jerry Tarkanian wants a timeout. 36 of the 56 makes on the year for Niall Murray from that three-point line. And he's a catch-and-shoot kid. Watch him catching that corner catch. No hesitation up. Pretty good arch on that basketball over the outstretched defender's hands. And this is a club now. Again, they don't shoot a great percentage. But it's either a three-point shot or a layup for the most part out of the Temple Isles. Get that ball to the high percentage spot on the floor with their bigs and then work that ball around the perimeter, let their guards let the thing fly. And Lynn Greer is the, the leader in that category. Boy, how unusual is it to see Temple with a record of 12 and 4 in their league not advance to the NCAA tournament? They had been there 12 consecutive times. This is their first NIT appearance since 1989. They won this tournament twice back in 38 and 69. Now we are back here with hopefully an exciting second round as well. What are you watching here for early on in the second round with Barry Williams? Nine. At Duke, Nova, Bama, Memphis, DePaul when they were playing well. And they played in. That's right. That's my club now right there. Keep an eye out on the Quakers. Melvin Eli on the floor. And evidently Fresno State had to get another timeout to keep that position. So they burned two timeouts here in the first half within 11 seconds of each other. And Temple still on top, 13 to 7. We've got women's NCAA tournament. Act trying to work that right once again. He connects to the head, and Barry Williams goes down once again. He stumbles, and he is down again. Marty Denkin encouraging Barry Williams once again. Well, there is no three that knock that hey, rule. Hey, look, at some point you've got to stop this, so if he takes one more serious shot, he's working on wobbling legs as it is. As we said, he's no sprint chicken. He's got no oh, oh, He's taking one more, and that is it. They have thrown in the towel to Barry. Doesn't like it when the women make their NCAA tournament. Every time... Barry Wilson. Right now, it's kind of a coincidence thing. Yeah, I'm saying that tongue-in-cheek because the last... All right, Danny. All right, Danny, get up now. Play on. Tough to get that 300-pound frame up near the rack. And Ron Rollerson losing possession there. Here's Travis DeMampi with a jump stop after a little bit of dribble penetration. First appearance for Chris Sandy. He gets it down. One to tell you, but once again, you don't want to see anybody take the kind of shots that Barry Williams took there for nearly four minutes. Barry Williams is up. And Danny Bonaducci, once again, giving Barry Williams the credit that he deserves. They get a lot of touches on that basketball. Melvin Rolf. The end comes at one minute and 25 seconds of rock. Score now at Fresno State. That's Greg Jefferson who just checked in for Temple. Now Temple goes really small. Expect Melvin Eli to continue to post up on that left block. If you're facing the basket, that's where nine out of ten times he's going to initiate his move, and he loves coming to the middle. Melvin Eli with five on the night. Westby out on top. Melvin also has four boards already. Well on his way to his 28th career double-double. Melvin Eli has had 12 of those this year. We'll look at Eli get out in the perimeter and cover. I think that's his greatest strength as a basketball player. He does so many things so well. 
but his footwork for a guy 6'11", you don't see very often. Greer for Smith. Shot clock at two. They never got a shot off. Possession call, and the arrow is pointing the other way. Good stop right there at the end by Hiram Fuller camped in the paint. Well, Fresno's done a good job this year in their half-court defense. That zone has been out of necessity because of lack of numbers, but they rotate to that basketball well. I mean, just saw the job by Hiram Fuller to rotate in and just yank it down. Like Paulie Smith just kind of dribbling right into the chest of Fuller. There goes Nyman. He rotated, and nobody else did. Seven for him. And it's 13-10 Temple. Again, you've got to do something when he lines up on that left block. And then you've got to take away his left shoulder. He's a catch, turn left shoulder, and go to the rim guy. If you let him do it, he'll dunk on you at the end every time. Won't go for Alex Westby, who's scoreless so far. Temple needs him to hit some points on that perimeter. Damon Jackson, he is not shy. That one kept alive by Demanby, and Melvin Eli lays it on the floor after scoring points number eight and nine. Well, Temple is just way too small right now to match up with Melvin Eli. He's 6'11", and he jump as high as he has to jump to make a play. That's exactly what happened the last two possessions. John Chaney's going to have to get some size back in the lineup, whether it's wide or roller, so one of the two has got to get in his ball game. Rollerson heading for the table. There's a foul on the perimeter. That'll be number one on Chris Sandy, who was ineligible up until two games ago. And the official's timeout, nine minutes in. John Chaney working hard on the road here in Fresno. Nope, keep thinking. Four days. And Targ's team making a good comeback. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? No, no. It's Selsen Power. Doctors recommend Selsen Blue. Man, that tastes awesome. Get Selsen Power. Pizza Hut kicked it to me, now I'm kicking it down to you. The new Pazon. If the Pazon was a shoe, it'd be like the size 14 triple E. 51 cubic inches of perfection. Wow, that's, that's a big shoe. 5.99 or 2 for 10.99. The new Pazon from Pizza Hut. Faster, faster, until finally your heartbeat matches the seams in the road. You continue on over green snaked waterways. And then you take a left and go past yesterday's grain and tomorrow's bread. And then another left and past lonely telephone poles and over railroad tracks once, twice. And then past an old elm tree that in the late afternoon sun casts a shadow like an old man's hand. And about a mile down, you'll see it on your left. There's a big sign out front. You can't miss it. Thanks. The new BMW 7. A new perspective on driving. Tina? I knew it see Todd. Mm -hmm. uh, ready to go? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to keep the mileage down on this car, so I drive it backwards four days a week. <sighs> Need a motor oil for a high-mileage car? We developed one. Pennzoil High Mileage Vehicle restores the performance of older engines. If you have a well-oiled machine with over 75,000 miles, bring it to Jiffy Lube for Pennzoil High Mileage Vehicle. Nine points and five rebounds already for Melvin Eli, who, as I told you earlier, has climbed to the very top of the all-time Fresno scoring chart and getting it done in a lot of different ways tonight. Two-time WAC player of the year, and he uh, understands how to separate. He doesn't have the power of the bolt to go up against a guy like Rose. Somebody's got quickness. He knows how to separate and jump up over the top of it. And he's got great feet. I mean, I'm really impressed with how he can get out on the perimeter, cover a guard if he has to. He's quick off the bounce, attacking the rim. And this is a kid you've got to remember that when he was coming out of high school in 1997, Bob, he was the number one center in that senior class that year. That's the talent he brought to the college level and the talent that he has underneath that headband every night. He is a handful. Out of Thornton Township, Harvey, Illinois, Chicago area, and he uh, supplanted Will Hooker, who had held the Fresno State scoring record for 10 years at 1,739 points. Melvin has gone way, way beyond that. Sandy out there harassing Lynn Greer, who's had very few touches lately. Couple with a four-out and one-in attack against this zone. They use a baseline runner. 
Hawkins had an open look for the corner. Rollerson picking up that loose ball. He goes up and banks it in. Ron Rollerson is averaging three points, four rebounds a game. He did have a double-double earlier this year with 15 points, 11 boards against Penn State. Sandy for three. And Chris Sandy treats. How good would this club have been with him all year? With Chris Jeffries then out for the year with a knee problem. And Tito Maddox eligible. Well, Jeffries is a guy that really put a hurting on this squad. He was the best perimeter shooter, the best perimeter passer. How about that look from Rollerson to Alex Westby, who went flashing by? They used the big fella up at the high post that time. I love his hand. I'm talking about a guy 6'10 and a mountain. You know, but he's got great soft paws. He's a good example of it on that possession. Lynn Greer feeling his way through. Took a grab from a bulldog on the way. And it'll be a foul on Hiram Fuller, his first. I watched Rollerson catch this basketball. He's going to get a cutter coming right down the middle. Great recognition against the zone. Make the pass, get the cut, boom, look at this. Here we come, there it is. Just a little step out, create a little bit more space and make that pass into your interior cutter. Rollers and executed to perfection. Hawkins to throw it in for Temple. Now Greer, oh, Sandy lost him. And uh, Lynn Greer misses it. You won't see that happen very often. Sandy looking to drive. Stop on the right side. Out on top to Manby. Travis unable to knock down the three. And the rebound by Temple's Alex Westby. When this club gets away from their strength, and talking about Fresno, that's when they come down and Melvin Eli doesn't get a touch during the possession. Exactly what we saw that time. Melvin Eli is the guy. He's got to at least touch the ball, if not shoot it. Westby for Brian Pope. And back. Now Greer. Looking right at Noel Felix to the corner for Westby. Still not able to hit a shot. Look at Polk keep that ball alive. Then the loose ball for Hawkins. Greer the jumper. Down goes the three. And eight for Lynn Greer. Good work by the small Owls on the offensive glass that time. How durable is Lynn Greer? Averages 39.8 minutes a game this year. Takes 18 shots a game. About eight of those are three-point attempts. He is really something. To he gets another three. That's a half dozen for Travis. A junior on a bend for Oregon. He shows flashes of brilliance here. And what over Jerry Tarkanian with every make that the man he makes right now, he almost hacks you off. Because he's been wearing that bit all year. Yeah. Now you decide to make it. Well, and Greer with another three, and that's 11 for him. All 8-10 for the second consecutive here. This is one of the great guards in America. Air ball thrown up there by Felix. Eli tied up with Hawkins, who refuses to let go of that ball. And the possession arrow belongs to the Temple Owls. Right now, Temple with Greer shooting great from the outside. Matt Mitchell back in for Fresno, taking a seat, Chris Sandy. Well, he was going to. And now they'll send Damon Jackson to the bench. He has not scored yet. But we talked about the numbers that Lynn Greer put up against Wisconsin this year. 47 points. Listen to this. 38 field goal attempts, 18 makes, 18 three-point attempts in that ball game. I mean, that's more shots in one game than I took in my entire career at the University of Arkansas. Guy took 38 shots in one game. Well, I once heard the only man who could hold you under 20 was Eddie Sutton, your coach. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Kept me on the pinch. Hard to score when you're not eligible. Under eight minutes to go first half. Eli has its trip, but it's a foul to do it. And it could be Rollerson. Melvin Eli's always had that up and under, ball fake, step through type stuff, and here he goes back to it. The step out, the under, the step through. And he is so difficult to fend. Rollerson's got to turn it into a push and shove power game down low. Eli's trying to turn it into a footwork, speed, and quickness game. That time, speed and quickness beat the power. Melvin Eli at the line, looking for double figures already. He may have his double-double before we hit halftime tonight. He's got half of it. Six rebounds to go with his 10 points. Two-time WAC player of the year. First guy to do that since Keith Van Horn did it for Rick Majerus in the Utes of Utah, 94 and 95. In fact, Fresno State's had the last three WAC players of the year. Courtney Alexander got that started in the year 2000. Two of my all-time great college players, Courtney Alexander and Chris Heron, wore that Bulldog uniform here at Fresno. 
Chris Aaron used to stop by the table and talk to Jimmy and I after hitting baskets. <laughs> he used to love that guy. He hit a bunch of them. Rear out there. Hawkins to his left. Shot clock inside 10. Well, don't they make you work defensively? You feel that ball being patient. Hawkins has it rimmed out, and Sandia runs down to pick it up. Temple by four. Alley. with the finish. Chris Sandy with a nice assist. And it'll be another foul, number two on Ron Rollerson. No Felix has highlight type stuff in his game. The only problem is there's too much time, there's too much blank tape from one highlight play to the other. But he can go up and catch around the rim and do all that kind of stuff about as well as anybody they've had in this program. No Felix missing. Bulldogs not shooting free throws that well other than Melvin Eli. He's out five out of seven so far. And here's Rollerson turning to face. That ball blocked. But they're going to give Eli a foul. Just got him on the hand a little bit. And Rollerson will go to the line and shoot a couple. And he's a pretty good free throw shooter. Number one on Melbourne. Big Cat's making 51% of his shots from the field. Reason why John Chaney's got him well schooled on what's a shot for you and what isn't. His range is about eight or nine feet, about where he tried to shoot that ball from. He's not going to beat you up over the top. You can block his shot because he can't really get that high arching shot up high. But if it's a power game, he's going to win against anyone in the country. He is a mountain. Missed them both. Temple, 0 for 2 from the line tonight. Fresno State just 2 out of 7. Sandy leaves it for Mitchell. Now demanding entry pass. Look at him triple down on Melvin Eli. Right back in there they go. The kick. And it rims out on Matt Mitchell, who had his sneakers on the three-point line when he shot that. This one will stay with Fresno. Now the under eight minute timeout, 642 remaining in the first half. John Chaney and his Owls matching up with Jerry Tarkanian and his Bulldogs. And so far, the visitors doing quite well. At least his feet are comfortable. Wolverine Dura shocks with new compressor technology. They don't quit. Hey, there's big news at 7-Eleven. It's the new Big Bite Combo. Delicious Big Bite hot dog made by Oscar Mayer. With three chili and cheese. Whatever you want. An ice cold Pepsi. And a big grab of chips. All for just $1.99. Oh, thank heaven. On Friday, 64 teams will play a little harder. Oh, value. Well, it does if you dial 10. Hey, look at our... Talk a little harder. Because who wants to be part of the crowd when you can be a champion? The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. First round action begins Friday at 6 and 11.30 on ESPN2. Hold on. I lost my wallet. My credit card was in it. You do have a Capital One No Hassle card, don't you? Well, don't worry. There's not another human for miles. protection if you lose your credit card check your mailbox today for capital one's no hassle card offer plus get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates <laughs> What's the secret to success? Hard work, desire, and a phone. Right now, you can get eight weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 38 cents a day. That's over 60% off the cover price. Just call 800-752-6300. That's 800-752-6300. For the Wall Street Journal. Take a look at this uh, Melvin Eli being triple team, Bob. And when that ball goes in, it's going to be kicked out. But when Matt Mitchell catches it out of that triple team, he's got to get the ball to this side of the floor. There's a shooter over there waiting for it. Watch Melvin Eli. He does a good job with three guys on him to get it out of the triple team. There it is. But you've got to kick that thing over one more pass. Make that extra pass to the guy that's on the weak side of the floor. Eli can't get it there, but the guy he passes it to has to be the one to reverse that basketball. Fresno State, riddled by poor shooting all year. 
Jerry claims they had a two hour practice yesterday, hit 10 shots the whole time. <laughs> I don't think he was exaggerating. 31 percent beyond the arc in conference play. 44 overall. Any outside game at all to go with Melvin Eli. And you've got yourself a team that's really going to do some damage in postseason. I like what he told us. He said, you know what? It's the first time in my 38 years of coaching I sit on the bench during pregame warm-ups and realize we're the underdog and we should be. They just don't have the talent that Tart's had over all those years. And a variety of off-the-court problems have been a big reason for that. Improper gifts, some academics have gotten in the way. Those are the things that have kept this from being a very good possible Sweet 16 or further team in that other tournament. Lynn Greer, that's 14 for him here in the first half. Well, it's a shame. One good career will come to a close tonight. Either that of Lynn Greer or that of Jerry Tarkanian. Well, now not Lynn, necessarily Tark, though. <laughs> Lynn Greer, though, is still going to be a part of that three-point shooting contest in Atlanta at the Final Four. That now, does that count in his career total? It will in mine, because Brad <laughs> Nestler, Brad Doherty, and I are going to be working it. And if there's a guy that's a threat to win that thing, you're looking at him on the floor tonight. That three-point shootout in Atlanta, Lynn Greer's my favorite going in right now. Well, he looks great tonight. There is no wasted motion in anything he does. You know, there's no wasted motion in the team. I mean, it, they, they just play a little slower game than everyone normally plays. They take what the defense gives them. This guy just gun, guns away when he wants to. Another three for Lynn Greer. You might be wondering, how could they go 12 and 4 and not make it into the NCAA tournament, even though they were knocked out of their own tournament by LaSalle? Well, the reason was that murderous non-conference schedule John Chaney played. Maybe this year is tough as anyone he has ever played before. And the overall record only 15 and 14. 29, 21 Temple. Greer now, a mid-range jumper, little short, and last touch by his teammate, Greg Jefferson. Talk about Link Greer shooting that basketball, Bob, and when you never get him in a hurry, he understands how to take himself into his own shot. He dribbles himself with a good rhythm dribble, has pretty good elevation for a kid that's about, you know, 6'2", 6'2 and a half at that lead guard spot. And he has great anticipation on the defensive end. Look at him out there right now at the top of that zone. Mitchell penetrating. And a Temple foul. It'll be on Lynn Greer. That'll be his first. John Chaney, pretty good guard himself back in his playing days, huh? 1951 Philadelphia Public League Player of the Year in high school. Went on to become an NAI All-American at the Philly Cookman and was the national tournament MVP in 1953. Good enough to play for the Globetrotters in yeah. 55, right after he graduated. You would never think by watching John Chaney's team play that a former Globetrotter. <laughs> they are anything but, but Globetrotters. College Hoops tonight, NCAA special. It'll be Friday at 5 Eastern. Tune in as Chris Fowler, Digger, and Dick Vitale analyze all the afternoon games on Friday. And they'll break down the brackets as the field gets pared down a bit. Log on to ESPN.com for more. Diggers will be talking about teams capable of pulling an upset. Just like that Arkansas Little Rock squad that got his Notre Dame team up in Minnesota that year. Why did you have Every to remind year. him of that? Every year he's going to talk about that. That 12 seed, 5 seed thing going on. Now we're going to get some of that. Starting tomorrow, Ryan Pope for Westby. Shot clock at four, a little fall away. Won't go for him. Oh, what a tip. Upstairs, Greg Jefferson. They don't get a whole lot of minutes out of him these days. But the L.A. kid here in California knocked one home right there. They need to get Alex Westby going. Number 23 with the ball, only two points so far. He averages 11. But Lynn Greer has really carried the load. Look at him penetrate, kick it to a folk. Long for Bryan on the three from the left side. And Mitchell back for Fresno State. Clock running under four minutes to go, first half. David Jackson, unable to hit anything so far. Melvin Eli looked like he had somebody on his back. It'll well, be on Alex Westby, his first. I agree with you what Jerry Tarkanian just shouted out at his club right in front of us. Get the ball to Melvin. I mean, that's the guy who's won a ton of games because he understands sometimes just keep it very simple. The next time out, just take Melvin Eli, stand him up in front of the huddle, and say, everyone, I want to introduce you a guy named Melvin Eli. Make sure he touches the basketball. Sometimes you got to be that simple with college kids. Sandy checks in. Matt Mitchell goes out. 
Melvin Eli looking for his 12th point already. Well, they seven guard. rebounds. They can't guard him down low. I mean, when, they, when he touches the basketball, great things have happened for his club in this half. And that's a dozen. The under four minute timeout with 3.47 to go. Melvin has 12. Introducing right now, number 33 in white. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, sound control, even home theaters. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning. We know homes. Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room. More people room. Or more headroom. Enterprise. So easy, it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. He's got the bazones from Pizza Hut in his hands. He can't handle the 51 cubic inches of Pizza Hut perfection. He can't go all the way. $5.99 or two for $10.99. The new bazone from Pizza Hut. Kevin's gone. We have something that I did not do. A wife with Morrister. Ideal player in the 21st century. We call him KG the Kid, KG. But if you've seen him with a basketball, you know that he grown. If you've seen him on the ball, but you know that he home. It's like every dunk is drastic. Woo! First to get drafted out of high school since Moses Malone. Now that body gotta earn their turns. Uh -huh. I think the kid game got hotter since his jersey burned. And you couldn't find a finer kid. Uh -uh. Then the seven foot South Carolina kid obsessed with balls. And the rim need a hard net. Hard. Better act like you know. Come on, dog. That's Kevin Garden. That's yeah, about to get an and one all of your mug. Said he play around the clock because he's balling his blood. He can't yeah. think about a turnover. Uh -uh. That's KG. He the player of the future. He's in a game about the turnover. Yeah. Think you got game, then you gon' have to learn over. Yeah. KG. ESPN's coverage of the Owens Corning NIT. We're still in the first round. Action here at Fresno State. And visiting from Philadelphia, nice little cross-country trip for Lynn Greer. How true is this guy? Does not hit the rim on these four made three-pointers. Wham, wham. Pure. How about a boom? As you can get right there. That guy right there can flat out shoot that basketball, and he shoots it a ton, huh? 521 shots taken on the year. The next highest guy is Hawkins with 287 attempts. You shoot the ball as well as he does. That's the guy that should get most of the shots. Talking to some of the Temple guys today, they say, we want to win so badly for Lynn. Hate to see his career come to an end. And it'll be on the NIT stage one way or the other. He's coming up big tonight. Coming off a 20-point game against LaSalle in the A-10 tournament. Here's Greer with that jump. Move it off to the left. And a rebound for Fresno's Damon Jackson. Chris Sandy to Jackson on the wing. Damon finally swishing one. That could be the start of something. We saw him against Oklahoma State when he couldn't miss. When he gets that first one down, who knows what's to follow. Two out of three makes on the year for Damon Jackson are from that three-point line. But it's not a consistent two out of three makes every game. He'll hit five out of five and go a couple of games in a row with those one out of six type numbers. Book for Greer. This guy ain't one out of six. That that guy another pure. swish. That guy is pure. Lynn Greer with 20. It's his ninth 20-point game of the year. He's had five 30 or better and a couple games of 40 or better as Jimmy told him. He had 43 against Fordham along with that 47 at Wisconsin. Rasmus at the entry. Melvin Eli fouled. Looked like Jefferson may have grabbed him on the way by. That'll be number one for Greg. Bob, if you're Fresno right now, you got a guy that's just lighting you up. Uh, and how can you let him get this open? Yes, he's shooting it from 23, 24 feet, but he's proven it to you already. The first 18 minutes of this ball game, he's got that kind of range. I've got the solution. Next time out, after Tark walks Eli over and says, this is Melvin Eli, then go, go down to the temple bridge <laughs> and bring number 14, Lynn Greer on the floor. 
Boys, this is Lynn Greer. <laughs> one's on our team, one's on the other team. Now he can go back and talk to his own coach. Man, you're in a zone, man, triangling two, whatever it is. Somebody's got to be within about a half a step of Lynn Greer at all times in this ball game from here on out. My goodness. Alvin Eli with 13 on the night. I've learned so much from you this year. <laughs> Introducing yourself to players from the other team now. All those film we've watched in the room together late at night, staying up studying this game. Like tonight's Temple and Fresno here in the Owen Scoring NIT for the final time this year, and many of you probably thankful for that. Carpenter and Dykes out here on the West Coast, and we've had a great run. It's been a great time this year. I'm advancing on, though, in my bracket to the women's tournament this weekend in West Lafayette, Indiana. George and Old Dominion going to get after each other. 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning Central Time. Beth Mounds is probably already there doing some stuff. There's a foul on Eli on the shot by Hawkins. Are there any other shows you're doing in March that you would like to promo ahead of time? <laughs> well, we got the BASS, you know, Bassmaster show going oh, on. No, that's not basketball. I'm sorry. Hawkins will throw it in for Temple. Fresno will set up down low with their bigs, Fuller and Eli. And Melvin Eli with a couple of fouls now. There's Lynn Greer with left side. I tell you, Chris Sandy's not real happy the way Greer throws his body around a little bit. Lynn is not big, 6'2", 175, and he'll get into you a little bit. Look at him penetrate and open it up for Hawkins. A line drive air ball turns into a pass, and Greg Jefferson collects his second basket of the night. He put all kinds of pressure you want to on Lynn Greer, and it don't phase him. Tell what, he understands angles, he understands speed of the game. You can learn a lot by watching 14 in that black uniform you see. Travis Demanby with his third three of the night. Sandy kicking it down to the corner there. We've got a pretty good ball game going here. 90 seconds before halftime. Temple on top, 36-32. I'm telling you, Tark's going to be mad at the man be at halftime for knocking down those shots. That's a tough those kind of deals, you know? Yeah, where you been? Where you been all season? Jefferson, bounce pass down low. It never got to David Hawkins. Here's Sandy, probing the perimeter. Jackson to his right. Damon on the wing to Manby. And they get a guy out on him, Brian Cole. Damon Jackson. And it's a one-point game now in the final 45 seconds before halftime. Nothing you can do about that when somebody jumps up and strokes it from 28 feet. That's what you have to do against Temple. If you don't knock down some shots over the top of them, you're going to get beat. Hawkins the miss. I tell you, Greer's giving those guys some great passes on the perimeter. Final 30 seconds. Tark wants to play for one shot here. And why not? He was down by six, and now he's down by just one. Tark trying to flatten that thing out right now. And that point guard handle it. Get a shooter on both wings and two bigs on the corner. Melvin Eli still needs to touch this basketball in this ball game. They're not going to whip Temple by shooting over the top of them all evening long. They can whip him by getting Eli the ball. There he there is. It is. He was stopped. What a good defensive play by Greg Jefferson. I think Melvin got poked in the eye or took a shot to the bridge of his nose. He's hunched over. And Temple leads by one at the half. 36-35. Melvin Eli with 13. Lynn Greer with 20. And Rich Eisen, the Temple Owls, all the way cross country, looking good so far. All right, thanks very much, Bob. One more half to go. We have NIT Madness to tell you about in this halftime. We are underway in round one. We'll see how aggressive Paula Jones is. Very little experience. As you can see, they are wearing the extra protective headgear with that centerpiece as well. Oh, oh good right hand of Paula Jones has those happy feet, right? Yes, yes. You know what they remind me of? <laughs> Paula attempting to attack Tanya's head. And yeah, she smacked a few times with a few good right hands, Chris. And finally an aggressive move, and Harding lands a right and another right. 
Is there any benefit to taking that first punch or two and kind of realizing exactly where you stand? Bob? No, not at all. Not at all. You want to hit and not get hit. You know, it's interesting. Paula Jones grew up in a very conservative family. Wasn't allowed to play sports as a youngster. But now she is getting into some heavy physical activity. Well, and she, Tanya Harding. She's trying to call timeout. Right on timeout. It's a boxing. Paula Jones off the retreat, turning her head. Tanya looks maybe a bit shaken. And that is the end of the first round, Harding versus Jones. And I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed with Paula Jones. She didn't totally back down. She tried to get on the offensive at times. In fact, if you take a look here, she caught Tanya Harding off guard right there. Now, Tanya actually could be a little bit frustrated. She's the heavy favorite coming into this bout. Everybody figures as a world-class athlete and a person who really has a well-sculpted body. She was just gonna come in here and take care of low. No big deal. All right, we'll be back with round two. Stream. Like it's critical to your business. A reminder from the first name in business continuity, EMC, where information lives. Thomasville is now at the Home Depot. Thomasville? Yeah, you got my attention. Thomasville craftsmanship. Thomasville quality. It's classy, it's American, it's elegant. And now for your kitchen or bath, Thomasville cabinetry. Kitchen cabinets? Now for kitchens, now for baths. Thomasville is great stuff. And now, no payments until January 2003 with your Home Depot consumer credit card. Home Depot makes beautiful things affordable. Thomasville, only at the Home Depot. This guy is about to eat a song. The pizza you eat like a sandwich. And these things are big. So you gotta train. 51 cubic inches of perfection. Come on, bag of bones. $5.99 or two for $10.99. Come on, tiny. The new Pazone from Pizza Hut. done in Fresno, and we've got a close game. John Cheney's Temple Owls clear across the country, holds a one-point lead at the half. Well, all the folks in the world of sports who have a say, and that would include me, believe that the Florida Gators will have their hands full when they play Creighton in the first round of the NCAA tournament on Friday, but it sure seems like they have their hands full with themselves. What with Brett Nelson suffering a fractured cheekbone in an in-practice altercation with Ladarius Tolfin uh, a couple of days ago now. Nelson should be fine, should be ready to play. Billy Donovan told the AP tonight, both guys' emotions got into it. They're both perfectly fine. They hugged each other when it was all over with. Nelson may be wearing a protective face mask on Friday. Brandon Knight, the special point guard for Pittsburgh, will be playing this Friday against Central Connecticut State. He strained his quadriceps in a loss to Connecticut in the Big East Final. But Knight will play. And what a great couple of nights it's going to be in the world of NCAA basketball. And ESPN, we are here to cover it for you. At 5 Eastern, after the afternoon games on Thursday and Friday, tune in to Chris Fowler and Digger and Dick. We'll be here to break down the afternoon games for you. That's at 5 Eastern, then at 12.30 Eastern, after the night sessions on Thursday and Friday, another edition of College Hoops Tonight, NCAA Special, Thursday and Friday, 5 Eastern and 12.30 Eastern, only on ESPN. In the pro game, the Philadelphia 76ers have been on fire of late four straight wins, closing in on the fourth Spot in the Eastern Conference, the Milwaukee Bucks keep losing, so the Sixers welcome the Kings into town, but they've been going through their East Coast swing like a knife through hot butter. And Bobby Jackson slipped, but gave it up to Chris Weber, who had 22 points. And then Weber again to put the Kings up one late. 76 is trailing by one Allen Iverson. The finger roll falls, Iverson with 32. Sixers up one, but the Kings went up one with a buck 36 to kill Asia. No, Vladi Divac, the rebound. Oh, so ginger. 
Kings go on a win by the final of 92-88, snapping Philly's four-game win streak. Sack has now won three in a row with its first season sweep of the Sixers since the 96-97 season. The Kings finish up their East Coast swing in New York tomorrow night and then at Toronto on Sunday. Across the Hudson, uh, actually this was off the ways. The Nets were in Boston where Eric Williams knocks down the three to give the Celtics a lead with a 90 seconds left. Kenny Anderson, former Net, nails the J to give the C's a five-point lead on the Nets. And then at the end of the game, Anderson moves in the pièce de résistance to Antoine Walker, wide open three. The Celtics hang on to win by the final of 97 to 89. Paul Pierce, another stellar game, 32 points as Boston's won six in a row after a four-game losing streak. That ties the season high winning streak set back from November 27th to December the 7th. We've got so much more NIT action to tell you about it today. Syracuse at home, back at home. Will that cure their losing ways that caused them to miss the NCAA tournament? Pizza Hut kicked it to me. Now I'm kicking it down to you. The new Pazone. If the Pazone was a shoe, it'd be like the size 14 triple E. 51 cubic inches of perfection. Wow. That's, that's a big shoe. 5.99 or 2 for 10.99. The new Pazone from Pizza Hut. never look both ways, which brings us to the safety triangle, the interconnected parts that enable you to stop, steer, and maintain stability. Ask your mechanic for a safety triangle inspection and quality replacement parts like Monroe Shocks and Struts. Save up to $75 off safety triangle parts or service when you buy Monroe Reflex or Sensatrack Shocks or Struts. So, set up a department meeting for tomorrow and put in a call to client. Get them up to speed. Anything else? Here's a thought. Instead of saving money by not using paper, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 Savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. I like that. Jot that down. Low prices on every item, every day. Staples 365 Savings. Yeah, we've got that. The mission of Underwriters Laboratories is testing for public safety. We test chemicals, appliances, life preservers, more than 17,000 different products. I could pay to break things. They pretty much destroy them. <laughs> yeah, we do some of that. We break things scientifically. Safety is the number one concern. My specialty is cathode ray tubes. Well, organic, high voltage, drinking water. I start fires. I feel like I'm making a contribution. I'm not going to say it's a piece of cake. It's a privilege to help consumers buy and use safer products. UL, working for a safer world. Twenty-one, please. Like playing around with stuff? Well, at Best Buy, you can play around with anything you want. Actually, that's half the fun. Best Buy, go ahead. Turn on the fun. He's got the bazoons from Pizza Hut in his hand. He can't handle the 51 cubic inches of Pizza Hut perfection. He can't go all the way. $5.99 or two for $10.99. The new bazoon from Pizza Hut. Hoop tournament begins Friday on ESPN2 at 6 Eastern. It's Indiana and TCU from Cameron Indoor in Durham. And then the West region gets underway at 11.30 Eastern, Santa Clara against LSU. When you win the men's preseason NIT, that usually means you've got a good team, and that usually means you don't wind up in the postseason NIT. But four consecutive losses to wrap up the season pop the bubble for Syracuse, which found itself in the unenviable position of trying to become the first team to win the pre- and postseason NITs. Here at home against St. Bonaventure, James Theus hits. Cuse up a dozen when Hakeem Warwick is working the glass. Cuse putting it away. Warwick had 14 big points off the bench. Here the soft jumper 
And Syracuse wins 76 to 66 as Jim Beheim avoids the first five game losing streak in his 26 years at Syracuse. So here's how the bracket looks. Syracuse awaiting the winner of Bowling Green and Butler in the lower part of the bracket. Minnesota, after wiping out New Mexico, is waiting the winner of Richmond against Montana State. 